and which can make you ready for the first unit test. So please just stay back, guys. The students are pouring in. I'll give it a start by 11.30. Okay? Thank you. Just one or two more minutes, guys. Uh, let the others also who are interested and who are really required or needed join. Then we'll give it a start. Please have some patience and be alert. Thank you.
Okay, everyone. I think we can give it a start. Very good morning to everybody. And first of all, Sri Gandhi Jayanti wishes to all of you. Well, we all know the important role played by Sri Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi, the father of our nation, who just put in sincere efforts in freeing India from the clutches of the mighty British. Well, in memory of his contributions to the free India, the independent India is, of course, declaring a national holiday on the 2nd of October, which everybody knows. And I don't have to give uh, any introduction to the most popular Indian, not only in India, but throughout the world, who had been a constant and consistent source of inspiration to millions and millions of people. And tens and hundreds of even the greatest leaders. Fine. So with that note, let us just look at this class. Let us just start this class. Well, see, as it is clearly mentioned, I hope my voice is clear and audible to everyone. If there are yes, any sir. disturbances sir. over the voice, yes, kindly let me know. Right. Thank you so much for the instant and active response. Guys, this, is, this, this particular class is mainly meant for those who could not, for any reason, late joining, not joining, miss the classes of the mentioned chapters. And those who did not have better idea about, I mean, the, the chapters mentioned over there, like the portrait of a lady, a photograph, the summer of the beautiful white hearts. See, today we have three chapters. One lesson, one poem from the main course book Hornbill, and one short story from, of course, the supplementary reader, Snapshots. We're going to just cover up these three pieces, but I'm really sorry I'm not able to present the screen because my laptop is absolutely out of charge and it's not getting charged. And, um, you know, I, I just do not have the presentations in my mobile phone. So what I try to do is I suggest you to keep the book open when the discussion, detailed discussion, not simply discussion, detailed view, detailed explanation of this, that, that particular chapter is going on. Okay. So I suggest you to just look for the books to get them opened. For that, I'll give you a couple of minutes. Just get them open as and when required. So you just go to that particular part of the lesson, poem, or short story, and have the reference. Especially while dealing with, a, with the poem, a photograph by Shirley Talson. It is pretty much required. Okay, I'll try to just present the screen from mobile phone that the original, you know, poem. But in regard to the short story, the summer of the beautiful White House by William Saroyan, and the first lesson by, uh, I mean, from main course book, Foreign Bill, that is a portrait of a lady, the portrait of a lady by Kushwan Singh. So I'll not be able to just present it. Well, so you guys need to take care of that original lesson, which I hope everybody will have in their hand. Okay? If you do not have it, at least serve from the net and just have them readily available. Okay, now the time is 11.37. I wait till 11.40. For all there were any latecomers, let them also join in the meantime. So I give you three minutes of time, now 11.38, two minutes of time to get ready with the books. And open the very first lesson from the main course book, Hornbill. As and when required, you can just refer to it if it is really required. See, the guys are still joining. Please just take your time, open it up, and I'll get back to you at 11.40. And then we will just finish the discussion. Thank you. Hope the instruction is clear, everyone. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right, thank you. Thank you.
Okay, everyone. Can you all hear me clearly? Shall we give it a start? Yes, right. I've started using my earphones. Is the voice clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right, right. Thank you. Yes. Okay. So now we are going to talk about the very first uh, 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 chapter of the three chapters for the discussion today. The portrait of a lady. Okay. Now see it is, as you all see, who is the writer? Somebody. Kushwan Singh. Kushwan Singh. That's Kushwan. great, Varun. Kushwan Singh. See, the name itself shows that he is an Indian. Okay. So as we are not required to know much about the writers, at least knowing the names is our moral, moral responsibility. So Kushwan Singh is an Indian. Besides being a writer, he was a journalist and he is one of the best known journalists from India. He recently died, of course, he was conferred with India's most prestigious civilian awards, Padma Vibhushan, all that. And that's a bit about him. Now coming back to the story straight away, see, in regard to each chapter, we will be just discussing the detailed summary. Okay, that means without missing missing any important essential, I'll be covering the actual content. And then you need to work on that particular chapter today, whatever that we discussed today, whether the portrait of a lady by Krishwan Singh or a photograph by Shirley Talson or the summer of the beautiful white hearts by William Sarwayan. So please just go through those chapters, short stories or poems and be ready with your concerns, if at all there are any, in tomorrow's class. Uh, is there a student called Harshit Chauhan from Raman? Can somebody please, Raman, acknowledge? Is there a student with the name Harshit Chauhan? Yes, sir. Right, thank you. So, that's the point. And just have your concerns readily available for tomorrow's uh, uh, session. We will first address those concerns and then discuss the rest of the two chats for tomorrow. That is, we are not afraid today if we can all be together and the address by Magaminko. Now let's get into the lesson. See, in this lesson, the portrait of a lady, Kushwan Singh, in fact, describes his own life, his own life how he had the bond, relationship with his grandmother. Well, he had an intimate relations with her since his childhood. So their friendship, their intimate bond or relation was broken or snapped up when they had to move to a city. And the English school, science stream or science subjects and music, in fact, all these make the gap wider and wider. In fact, these are all not liked by the grandmother who was very orthodox and traditional. She had her own reasons. So she did not accept the English medium school. Back in the village, when these two were alone and sharing a close bond, the way they were taught, the, the way Kushwan Singh was taught was entirely different from the way he is now being taught in an English medium school. So she was not ready to accept that one. And the science subjects which were not talking anything about the God and more or less talking about logic and not spirituality was not liked by her. And to her music is something that is learned by indecent people, not dignity, not, not the people with dignity, not the people of that caste, of that standard, of that type, of that class. So they, they, the, the gap between Kushwan Singh and his grandmother became wider and wider. And to add 
fuel to the fire that means to make the situation bad from worse go from bad go from bad to worse the narrator went abroad for higher higher studies see he arrived after 5 years he arrived back to india after 5 years see it was really an occasion for celebration and the old lady after seeing krishwan singh uh, you know after f- 5 years tried herself to celebrate that occasion but unfortunately she fell ill she got sick and died see it might sound like dramatic but it is really happened in his life krishwan singh and her death ma sound some dramatic something dramatic something cinematic but that really happened and that really touched and remain touched the heart of kushwan singh and remained in his memory till his death and so he thought of just you know putting it forward in his writing i hope the the the, the brief idea about the lesson is clear shall we get into the detailed one Yes, great 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 some more responses from the others as well are they clear yes sir. the brief idea sure. right right thank you let's move on then okay so as i said earlier it's all about the relationship that he has shared how the blonde was very close how intimate the relationship between kushwan singh and his grandmother see his grandmother was like everybody's grandmother how does a grandmother look like does she look like uh, you know in in no i'm not joking it's just don't take it you know too personally they just they are not generally seen in india or the foreign we are in india so high heels or pencil heels you know how do they look like they look like in traditional dresses most of the times okay in some parts of india sari in some parts of india chudidar but they look in traditional dress most of the times and and gray hair would be there generally don't say sir my grandmother dyes the uh, you know hair and her hair looks black only are don't be silly yaar let me just be general yes samrit you you unmuted your mic is there any concern samrit no sir right so please remain mute everybody if there is any concern please mute, unmute yourself any concern means probably it might relate to the network issue as well if my voice is cracking to you if it is breaking up please let me know okay by saying excuse me sir because it is not as we are disturbing the class please have that manners and coming back to the point so she is like everybody's grandmother an old woman with grayish hair and sometimes with a stoop that means bent all that and uh, you know for him it was very hard to believe that once she had been young and pretty pretty means good looking see you two might have uh, had if not all by god's grace we some of us might have had grandmothers might have grandmothers at home but till the time you are born they were young and after the birth your birth maybe you started looking at them and probably you cannot believe if they show you if they show you you know their uh, pictures in teenage their picture uh, when they were children you might not believe and probably 
you really relish the very idea and you will be surprised to see them being pretty young i don't know how many of you have had experience of that one but uh, i i just had the chance to you know have a glance at the young uh, at the picture of my grandmother my father's mother but i could not have any picture for my mother's mother but i had a picture of my grandmother i mean father's mother and i was really surprised to see i could not believe my eyes because when i was born she was old and i saw her being old with wrinkled face and the eyes very you know uh, 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 you know in a, in a deep cave like you know structures with gray hair and walking slowly and afterwards you know with the help of a stick you know, with with a normal sari back in south india uh, you know ladies mostly especially old ladies old women women prefer wearing sarees only rather than chudidars mostly mostly okay if not all so that's how i looked at her and you too might wonder so today if you just want to feel thrilled you can just ask her ask your grandmother whether your father's mother or mother's mother if they had any teenage pictures just look at them you too want you know feel wondered thrilled you really can't believe see that that's how the feelings of kushan singh here okay she was an old woman and it was hard for him to believe that once she had been very young and pretty and moreover his grandfather's picture you know that was hung above the uh, uh, mantel piece in the drawing room of their house you know looked very very old see his grandmother was old and the picture of his grandfather looked older he looked at, at least a 100 years old man he looked like that he looked at least a 100 year old man now you can just imagine how how old he could have been see kushraj day could have been a little early man because you recently joined dbs gandhi dam and th this session is mainly for you for you means you know for the students like you i don't know whether you guys had had this discussions in your previous school if at all you joined somewhere but it is your responsibility and those you who joined late uh, dps gandhi dam jo joined late make sure that they should be on time at least tomorrow kush was that clear kush rajde yes sir thank you let's move on so you know you know joining a little late will not make you feel interested man that's my main concern yeah you might be late for you know genuine reason as well but the reason is but my concern is you might not feel interested number one you might not understand completely number two and these two will 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 do a great deal of damage now please be on time next time and with that note let's just resume our class so you know he could not believe his mother uh, his grandmother being old and he was able to feel that his grandfather was older and he felt that uh, he could have been at least 100 years old that means too old and kushwan singh's grandmother description
the class see yes sir in we order are not to just strange. yeah yeah no just just do not feel like that and feel free if you if something is not understood feel free to express yourself because it is your class yeah it's a part of adjustment i have been attached to commerce and humanities and madam has been attached to your section and who knows next year i may be attached to these guys see and you must understand one thing very clearly please every teacher teaching is unique you don't have to feel odd about it every teacher's presentation yes sir please let me you can also telling the beads telling the beads means she is always counting those beads and she is to and see the narrator and and the narrator who is the narrator by the by who is Who's the Shwan narrator Singh. yeah kushwan singh that's great 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 so kushwan singh and his grandmother were good friends actually their parents kushwan singh's parents had left him with her okay and they, they just went to the city so they had a chance to be together and she had a chance to take care of him she used to wake him up in the morning she got him ready for school uh she said her morning prayer in an unchanging sing song the chanting she used to wash his wooden slate and plaster it with yellow chalk now all these being done and she used to take an earthen ink pot and a red pen she used to tie them in a bundle and hand it to him and she used to give him a thick stale chapati to eat with a little butter and sugar spread on it and she used to of course carry her several uh, stale chapatis with her for the village dogs as well and that's how she used to take care of let me repeat all those okay and that's how she was taking care of him because they were alone back in the village while kushwan singh's parents back in the city for you know their own reasons they just left the village probably that might be because of a job that might be it's not clear here from this lesson but that's pretty clear that they might it it might be because of the job and so they both had the opportunity to share a closer bond closer relationship in this way she used to wake him up in the morning she just used to get him ready for school she used to say her morning prayer in the same voice which he had been habituated to and and then she used to wash wash his wooden slate nowadays we have digital digital slates but when in those times you know they used to have wooden slates wooden slates and the main part of the slate used to be made up of rock black kind of rock and slate pencils with a kind of rock i don't know much about you how you just had it when you were too young 
maybe in pre kg or l kg but we use it to have some uh, you know iron slate i i personally i clearly remember uh, you know i cl clearly remember myself sitting on my father's lap and practicing the alphabet in my mother tongue i'm not joking please i still remember it and how the house was how my father uh, used to take me into his lap and how you just used to ha hold my hand to to you know make me practice uh, the alphabet in my mother tongue still still very clearly i remember but the slates we used to have was were iron ones earlier they they, they were be they they used to be wooden ones with the, with the, the black piece of slab of rock to write on with wooden uh, uh, beading beading means outer uh, 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 you know closures hopefully we are make, we are able to reach everybody i'm able to reach everybody am i make any am i making any sense here am i intelligible to everybody are you guys able to follow me yes sir yes sir great great okay so this is how we used to have and, and then you know she used to uh, you know plaster uh, the, that with yellow chalk that means write all the required alphabet or words in in lo1 lo a kind of chalk and she used to take earth and ink pot an ink pot made of soil and with a red pen all that and she used to tie tie them tie all of them slate all that in a bundle and hand it to him see the slate the ink pot or the red pen all that and along with her she used to carry some more sail chapatis apart from the sail chapatis thick ones where uh, sorry on 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 uh, whose bread butter and uh, you know sugar spread for village dogs she used to just carry some more sail chapatis along with her see apart from these she used to take him to school that means accompanying actually the school was also attached to uh, uh, a temple we used to have actually schools like that only later on schools got separated temples got separated now there is no relation to school and temple people say that uh, school is a temple of education <laughs> but uh, uh, i know that decides that that is you know this that decides that is decided on many aspects please now coming back to the point so the school was attached to the temple and there a, a priest a pujari used to teach the children the alphabet and the morning prayers the children used to sit in rows on either side of the chair and they used to sing the alphabet and the prayer in chorus not in single but in chorus which was being taught by the priest and the grandmother was also there sitting inside the temple she used to spend her time in reading holy books the the scriptures like the bhagavad gita the mahabharata the the bhagavata something like that holy books and she used to walk back home with him only and at that time she used to throw those stale chapatis that she carried to the village dogs and you know something those chapatis that she carried used to be given to them while returning and those village dog village dogs used to gather at the temple door because they, they all knew that she would offer them a stale chapati and they growled and fought for the chapatis thrown to them see this is something very very clear to the mind of uh, kushwan singh and the narrator's parents this 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 scene is over okay the narrator's parents you know after reaching the city and uh, you know get getting settled there sent for them in the city and it had been the turning point in their life it had been the turning point in their friendship see they they both shared the same room like back in the village but his grandmother back in the city now the scene has been shifted to the city please the parents 
of Kushwan Singh sent for them to come back to the city. And it was been it 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 was a turning point in their friendship, their relationship. They both shared the same room, but his grandmother was no longer able to accompany him to school. Number one. Number two, the narrator started going to an English medium school, and that to buy a motor bus. And number three, there were no do dogs in the streets. And number four. the mother took to feeding the the grandmother i mean the grandmother took to feeding the sparrows not the dogs in the streets but the sparrows coming to their house like this changes happened years rolled by time passed by time elapsed the grandmother and her grandson saw less of each other's now things started becoming going from bad to worse because she hated english words and science and she felt that anything without teaching god uh, you know is something really really waste anything that does not include scriptures is a waste so she she did not have a better opinion on the english medium school where teaching about god and scriptures was not found and moreover she did not even like the music lessons being given in school because she thought that music was quite indecent it was good only for prostitutes and beggars please remember these two words i hope you guys know the meaning of these two words prostitutes and beggars in her view music was learnt and practiced by only prostitutes and beggars she was of that opinion please and so she was not ready to accept and later on the narrator kushwan singh went afterwards afterwards went to the university studies he was given a room of his own at least there was a relation common link of sharing the same room now that was also gone he was given a room of his own the common link of friendship even though it was very weak was also broken that is sharing the common room when was that done when was that happened when he started university studies how was it done when he was given a room of his own and the grandmother in fact accepted her loneliness without any complaints she was a very matured lady she felt very bad about that one she felt very sorry about not having her grandson with with him in the same room not having her grandson talking to her you know with a lot of intimacy love care not talking with her you know spending time with her sharing her his experience with her you know she just started accepting all that and now the loneliness as well are you guys able to follow me Yes sir. Yes sir. Great, yes, great, sir. great. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Let's move on. Yes sir. So she was always busy. Thank you. Thank you. She was always busy. Yeah, she started accepting all these without any complaints. She did not complain against anybody, neither Kushwan Singh's parents nor Kushwan Singh's Kushwan Singh himself. She did not complain against anybody. She accepted the reality and she just accepted it without any complaints. and she just made herself busy with her uh, spinning wheel like you see the spinning wheel of mahatma gandhi ji she used it to spend more time with her spinning wheel weaving something and she used it to talk very rarely not only with the family members but also even kushwan singh she used it to relax only in the afternoons and that too while feeding the sparrows who used it to come to their house and who used to sit in the veranda who used to come to the veranda of their house veranda means the front room of any house okay it's an indian word please i hope everybody knows that one and that is the yes, only sir. time for yeah that is the only time for the relaxation she used to feed them and getting relaxed she used to sit in the veranda and getting it getting them feed, fed 
she used to break the bread into little bits and threw them to the sparrows and that's how she used to feed hundreds and hundreds of sparrows used to you know come there they used to collect around her gather around her and they used to create a hell of a noise because when you see lots of lots of birds you know you know getting fed and that is birds like a sparrow like like a sparrow they make a lot of chirping you know lot of lot of chirping and are over 100 birds roughly and now imagine a hell of a noise some came even to sit on her legs and some even perched on the shoulders of him of her now you can understand how those sparrows became fearless with the grandmother and those sparrows became friendly with the grandmother some used to come and sit on her legs and some used to perch perch means walking on her shoulders but she never ever drive them away drove them away sorry feeding them was the happiest time in the old day for her so she used to get relaxed and cherish those moments now the time has come for the narrator to go abroad in the meantime for higher studies the grandmother was again not upset no complaints no regrets she remained calm she had she has even she had even come to the station to leave him the railway station to leave him to the airport to see him off but you know she just i told you she was a very mature lady she did not show any emotions she simply kissed kushwan singh's forehead silently that's it the narrator thought that is kushwan singh thought it was the last sign of physical contact between them because he is leaving for abroad yeah she might talk to him probably he might also talk to him through various means but physical contact and that to at that moment impossible so he thought that it was the last physical contact between them this is one reason and the major reason is she was too old by that by that time and he was pretty sure that he would not be able to come back to india in 5 years he was doubtful about his grandmother because that is something really something really essential to accept in our lives i hope you understand what i mean he was doubtful about the the life of his grandmother he was not sure whether she would be able to she, she would be able to live till the time he come came back and that is what so he thought that it was the last sign of the physical contact between them but but fortunately when he returned after 5 years there was no narration in between please straight away after the 5 years he returned and in fact that the grandmother did not look a day older she remained as it was as she was sorry as she was with the same silvery locks oh, you know waving over her pale face bloodless face stoop bead rosary in her hand everything remained same nothing changed and she had already been older and there was nothing much there was no possibility of becoming much, much more older she remained as she was and in that evening of the return day a change came over her what is that change she did not pray some strange things happened change changes happened she did not pray and she collected all this is something very important please pay attention she did not pray and she collected all the women from the neighborhood she had the, you know she was good at playing the drum so she just took the drum an old one started singing loudly by playing it loudly she continued thumping the old drum like this and continued singing 
for several hours in spite of her old age. She sang the homecoming of warriors. That is, that was in Hindi, of course. She sang, and they, they, see, these guys had to persuade her to stop because she was so very involved that she continued singing and by uh, singing and thumping the drum for hours and hours together. They had been there too. Well, singing and beating of the drum could make her very tired, and so they all wanted to, you know, just, you know, wanted her to stop it. And for the first time, she forgot to pray. She might be overwhelmed with the return of his beloved, uh, sorry, her beloved grandson, probably. And the next morning, because of her extreme tiredness, extreme exhaustion, she fell ill. And as she knew her physical condition very clearly, she declared that her end was very near. She did not want to waste you know, any more time talking to anybody, talking to anybody in the family. She simply laid in the bed peacefully. She continued praying and telling her beads, all that continued. And at one point of time, I can't say cinematically or dramatically, but her lips stopped moving. The rosary fell down from her lifeless fingers and she was declared dead. She was laid on the ground. She was covered with a red shroud, red piece of cloth. See, we have practices of you know, covering the dead body's face and the whole dead body, the corpse, with a white shroud. Shroud means a piece of cloth which is used to cover the de dead body. See, some have the habit of you know, covering the dead body with a white piece of cloth, and some have the habit of, have the, not habit, the practice of custom of covering the uh, you know, dead body with a, with a red cloth. Actually, you should not use the word cloth there. It is called shroud. And that dead body was covered with red shroud. It was evening. The sun was setting. They bought a wooden stretcher. Wooden stretcher is something that is used to carry the dead body to the graveyard. And they stopped the halfway in the courtyard. Of course, we Indians, I don't know much about the traditions here, practices here, but back in South India, or anywhere you can see, when a dead body is being carried to the graveyard, they just stop at one point of time on their way. They just put the wooden structure on which the dead body is placed on the ground and call him or her to come back to life. Yeah, it might sound very strange and, you know, silly or funny. But they do like that. They do like that. And then, because it is the last try that they give to, to, to take back them and to take care of them if they are alive. See, sometimes, you know, many people... You know, in recent news also, I, I heard a lot of, lot of bits of news where people were declared dead even by doctors, then came to life. Somewhere they were mistaken. Or somewhere something supernaturality must have happened. And so, people just follow this practice. I hope you got this point. Is this point clear yes, to everyone? Ah, right. So great, great. Now, now, then the, the cremation done. Thousands and thousands of sparrows. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. One, one moment, one moment. Here, I missed one more thing. See, after placing uh, it in the wooden structure, she was laying in the uh, you know, veranda where she used to feed uh, sparrows, right? Huh. So there, some sparrows came. At this time, but this time, they did not make any noise, strangely. And even 
everybody got surprised. See, this shows that the bird knew that the one who was feeding them was lying dead over there. My goodness, this is something very strange and shocking. Everyone felt yes, sorry sir. for the birds. Seriously, everyone, everybody, including Kushwan Singh, felt sorry for the birds. Well, how attached they were with the grandmother. And, and Kushwan Singh's mother brought, the interesting thing is, the Kushwan Singh's mother brought some bread uh, and broke them into little pieces, little crumbs, and threw them for the birds who have come there, who had come there. Oh my goodness. The birds took no notice of all those pieces. They simply, you know, landed on the ground, stood at the body, did not make any chirrupings, not paid any attention to the thrown crumbs of bread, and left the place. This is something dramatic, but Kushwan Singh was so very attached that he wanted to describe the incident in such a way. And when they had carried her dead body outside, all the sparrows flew away quietly. Then the cremation done. Later, no sparrows, sparrows came to the veranda. That's how her overwhelming, sorry, his overwhelming emotions and nostalgic feelings about the relationship that he had shared with his grandmother had been described in this autobiographical story, The Portrait of a Lady. Are we clear with this? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, well. Now, if this part of the lesson is clear, we will simply just stick to uh, the next one that is a photograph. Then we'll see the third one tomorrow, please. Because I should respect your time as well. I don't think we will be able to you know, cover up that one as well. I don't want to go in a, on a faster pace because there is no point in going on a faster pace. Yes, sir. It's just like wasting yours and my time by just asking you to join the class and without detailing the things. If I just go faster, then it is of no use. Let's see it in the next class that is tomorrow. And please just give me a bit of time to present the screen about the actual poem. Okay, just one moment, please. A photograph. PDF. Uh, I'm not able to just get it downloaded. To just one moment, please. Um, yeah, okay, fine. Yeah, this is also a better thing to do. Okay, let's just put this one. Let me just start present presenting the screen, please. Uh, kindly acknowledge once you are able to see the mobile screen. If that is visible, please just acknowledge it. Yes, sir. Right. Okay. Now, as you see it here, we are talking about the poem, a photograph. I can't present the original one. The original PDF available online is not getting displayed, is not, you know, having an access to get it downloaded to present it. So let's just have it from the other files, okay? So let's just give it a try. Now here, you see, this is from the writer Shirley Talson. And this poem is composed in, as you see, blank verse. That means no rhyming. Generally, you see poetry in rhyming. You yeah, don't have to know much about Shirley Talson. If, you, if at all you want, you just Google it. You can find a lot about her. All right, and in this also, more or less, the, the theme remains the same, please. Again, nostalgic feelings about the poet's mother by the poet. There, 
the other's grandmother by the other. Here, the poet's mother by the poet. I mean, poetess. So this is written in blank words. Blank words means without having any rhyming in it. Okay? And this particular poem discusses three stages, three different stages. Well, as you see, lines one to four, lines uh, uh, into 13. So these, uh, and then last one, line six, uh, 16 to 19. In these, you know, lines, we can see three stages being discussed. In the first stage, see, the, the title doesn't have any, you know, hidden meaning or peculiar meaning. A photograph means a photograph. That's it. The picture. Now we should know whose photograph it is and what is it about. Okay? Right. So in the first stage, as there are three stages, the photograph shows the poet's mother standing at the beach enjoying a holiday with her two cousins. How many cousins? Two cousins. She was more or less 12 years old at that time. And in the second stage, the poet takes us 20 or 30 years, excuse me, 20 or 30 years later. 20 or 30 years later. The mother would laugh at that way. She and her cousins, Betty and Dolly, these are the names of the uh, uh, cousins, with whom she was seen standing on a beach in the photograph about which the first stage of the poem discusses. So in the second stage, we will be taken back, sorry, we will be taken ahead by 20 or 30 years when the poet's mother was still alive, wherein she talked about how her mother would laugh at the photograph by the way they dressed with themselves, by the way they stood, by the way they you know, smiled, by the way they spent their holiday with the cousins. And in the third stage, The poet remembers the poet's mother, her mother, with a heavy heart because her mother was no more. And when she looked at the photograph, she was revived the nostalgic feelings in the poet. That means all those memories. All those memories. Just one moment, guys. One moment. Hold on, everybody. I'll just get back to you in a moment because 10th class and uh, 12th class students have the examination today. 10th class students have English examination today. Now they're asking for the examination link. Let, let me just have a cross check if the examination link has been provided or not. Still, still, still asking for the link. Just one moment, please. Let me stop presenting the screen.
and those who are really keeping the pace with the class would be joining this class. And those who missed the pace and doing their own work, <laughs> you know, they would not join it because it all happened all of a sudden. So let us just start. Uh, can you remember what was the strength earlier? It was around 38 or 40, right? Yes, sir. Yes, 42, sir. 42. 42, uh, 48. Uh, yeah, 42, 42. Now see, something around 24, 25. This is where the problem. So some of them have just simply joined. Okay. So as this form is a very simple one, you know. So we don't have to invest more and more time on it. But at the same time, I cannot really go faster. Yeah, it may exceed a little bit of time because of some other issues. Seriously, 10th class and 12th class students were not provided with the link at half past 12 sharp for the examination. It is provided at 12.38. Okay. So it's just because of ensuring that one. I had to leave the session, but I could not join back. This is the reason. And with that note, let's just resume the class. And let me start sharing the screen as well. Okay. Can you all see the laptop screen? Sorry, the mobile screen. Can you all yes, see sir. that? Yes, yes, sir. Sir. yes, sir. Just one moment. I'm not able to locate that one. Just one moment, one moment. I'm not able to locate that one. Yeah, Hush Chauhan. Yeah, here it is. I yeah, found that one. Now let me just restart presenting, uh, sorry, represent the screen. Yeah, here you are. So, yeah, the, the last stage, we were talking about the last stage. First stage, Port's mother standing at the beach, enjoying the holiday with her two, two cousins when she was about 12 years old. And second stage, was after 20 or 30 years of from the photograph taken that means maybe we can say when she was in 30s late 30s or 40s something like that and at that time she was of the opinion that the mother would laugh at looking at the photograph in she was, you know, strangely dressed, strangely looked, something like that. Because if you just look at the way back photos, you know, you will definitely, even your way back photos also, will make you laugh. You dressed yourself and how you looked like and where you looked like, how you behaved, what kind of facial expression, what kind of skin tone you had, and what kind of shoes or couples that you wore. That really made you yes, uh, <laughs> yeah, this is the truth here. Yeah. This is the truth. Even the richest, you know, uh, uh, Mukesh Ambani, who is known for having a net worth of more than six, seven lakh crores. 93.8 billion. Well, hmm. so in Indian currency, more than seven lakh crores. And in next in line, Adani, around five lakh crores. By see you you can even just find their photographs to be very funny to be very very funny and very very you know something like that that can make us laugh yeah they might be very rich but the way they dressed themselves when they were young the way they looked the way they gave the uh, you know <laughs> uh, I can say they, they they stood or I can say how they just you know did all that excuse me. My MM sir is calling. Excuse me, guys. Excuse me. Hey, Ridham. Srivastav. Ah, bhai, bolo. Tera dima kharaab nahi ho raha yaar. Kya kar sakte hain? Bhai, mera sir dukhne laga, sir. Aaj aur milte hain, shaam ko chalte hain. Haan, ye tu baat hai, sir. Call karenge tumhe. Okay, 
सीना ही चलते सीना ही <laughs> पागल है क्या बे फ्रेंड्स को चल हां वो सही सॉरी अगेन यू नो इट वाज एन ऑफिशियल स्कूल मैटर ओनली इट्स ओके दे वांटेड टू रीकंफर्म इफ द लिंक्स विद ऑल द फोर सेक्शंस ऑफ क्लास 10 वाज वाज शेयर्ड ऑन या थैंक यू थैंक यू लेट्स मूव ऑन सो we it takes actually around uh, you know um 20 minutes here strictly speaking from now on please be ready for that 20 to 25 minutes maximum okay and as you know i can't go in a hurry so please just acknowledge it uh, let me start sharing the screen once again there you are so with that note let's move on the third stage was this one she remembered the the mother mother with a heavy heart because she was no more and so and so she revived the nostalgic feelings in her i mean in the poet now let us see the first four lines the cardboard shows me how it was can you all see that yes sir yes sir the highlighted part right please the highlighted part see the cardboard shows me how it was when the two girl cousins went cuddling each one holding one of my mother's hands and she the big girl some 12 years or so so in this the poet looks at the cardboard frame the cardboard frame of an old photograph the photograph showed two girl cousins holding the hand of the poet's mother and they had gone for a sea bath or a kind of beach holiday out of those three his mother sorry her mother her mother was the biggest girl perhaps as you see she was near 12 years old there's nothing very hidden there it's very simple please and next all three stood excuse me all three stood still to smile through their hair at the uncle with the camera a sweet face my mother's that was before i was born and the sea which appears to have changed less washed their terribly transient feet this is something very much important see all of them were standing at the beach they stood silently smiling uh, through their hair and watching at the uncle who was standing there with the camera why do you think that they were smiling through their hair what does that mean actually did you make any sense out of it can you can you hear me please can yes, you hear me sir. yes sir yes sir yes, the yes presentation sir. i had to you know just admit bhavya patel so i just went to a different screen it's unlike the laptop you know probably i would be out of the class please just don't get worried and uh, see uh, uh, i hope you are able to see the mobile screen yes, as well sir. Yes, yes sir we can see now the question yeah now the question is why do you think that they could have smiled through their hair you know they were on a holiday and that too on the beach enjoying and you know it might be because of windy weather their hair being the girls could have been waving you know could have been you know just just waving in the air and it's back it's just because of the that they smiled through their hair when the photograph was clicked and see next one that was the time when the poet was not even born and so at that time she said that her mother's face was very sweet and attractive she said clearly a sweet face my mother's that was before i was born which means a mother's face was very sweet and attractive at that time that is 
when she was very young about 12 years old how much 12 year old about not exactly 12 years or so it's, it's it's clearly mentioned 12 years or so that means not clearly known and she just you know felt that it was very attractive and she was standing at the beach it did not mean that uh, she became ugly and devil look like it looked like a devil after she was born but she was you know very pretty attractive sweet at that time and what was she doing at that time she was standing at the beach the sea at that time has not yeah that the sea was also captured in it and the sea which was seen in the photograph has not changed much has not changed much much see and the sea which appears to have changed less the one which was the part of the sea that was captured in the photograph when clicked seemed to have changed very less that means there was no change the sea has not changed much and that was in fact the one that was not that had not been changed much was washing the feet of the th the three girls including the poet's mother the poet's mother and the two girl cousins we should not use girl cousin oh, sorry we can we, we should not use cousin girls but we can use girl cousins i have seen lots of lots of uh, you know english teachers as well for that matter using cousin brother cousin sister it's damn incorrect instead you need to use girl cousins or boy cousins okay brother cousin or see it's always a better idea to stop using the word brother or sister when you are using a cousin she is my cousin it shows that it is she you don't have to say you know you don't have to be gender specific over there and that guy raj kumar is my cousin that shows that it is he like that so now coming back to this point so what is the point that shirley talson wants to put forward here see forget about this one hill here before i was born it's very pretty simple to understand pretty simple to understand what is that see at that time you know all of them were standing at the beach they stood silently and they smiled through their hair and watching at the uncle who was standing there with the camera to click their picture all that okay fine and the photograph was clicked taken khichli a photo and that was the time when the poet was not even born because she was too young at that time i mean the poet's mother she was about 12 years old and at that time her face was very sweet and attractive and uh, of course standing at the beach the part of the sea could also be, could also be seen uh, uh, sorry could be that that was also seen could also be seen from the photograph and that sea has not changed much over the time and that sea that had not changed much over the time washed seen seen washed the poets and her cousins feet at that time that means there were wavy there were waves tides you know just running through their feet touching their feet just like a common scene we see on the beaches so they stood there while the sea was washing their feet now here there is a deeper meaning she i mean the poetess that is the simple meaning and here the deeper meaning is the poet try to draw a sharp contra contrast between the mortal nature of human beings and immortal nature of natural things mortal nature means anything that is subject to die immortal nature means anything that cannot die anything that cannot die anything that is subject to die is called mortal anything that is not subject to die is called immortal so the mortal nature of the poet's mother and the two girls 
to girl cousin cousins in general all the human beings and the immortal nature of the sea or any natural things in general have been drawn here and that is the reason why it's been referred to as have changed very less and it's been to refer to as their feed was transient and terribly terrible one transient means subject to change and subject to die what not the feet life did you get the clarity about these two lines which are very important hello yes sir right yes sir let's move on let's move on let's move on okay the next lines are some 20 30 years later the second part sorry the the, the third part uh, sorry the second part first part was that one only the second part is 20 30 years later some 20 30 years later uh, yeah what happened some 20 30 years later she laughed at the snapshot that means the photograph who who is she here the poet's mother see betty and dali she would say who who is she here the mother the mother would say see betty and dali and look how they dressed as for the beach who is as the elders who were dressed the poet's mother and the two girl cousins so after some 20 30 years later the poet's mother would say like that looking at the photograph see how dali and betty and how and look how they dressed as who are they here the elders who are as here the three girls including the poet's mother for the beach and that's how she says and that's what the poet says so some 20 30 years passed since the photograph had been taken now whenever the mother looked at the photograph according to the poet's mother sorry according to the poet her mother would laugh at it and she would also point out dolly and betty how they were dressed by their parents for the sea holiday beach holiday and the sea holiday had become a thing of past that we would discuss later on and here see the sea holiday was i can't relate that from there sorry bro from here straight away the sea holiday from there was her past and mine is her laughter both rai with the liberties of loss again more important lines so what are these you know here the sea holiday had become a thing of the past for the poet's mother and the sweet laughter of the mother in the photograph had become the poet's own past so we are talking about two past things one past thing is related to the mother i mean the poet's mother the other one is related to the poet herself okay now what are the two things the sea holiday here as you see the sea holiday was her past whose past the mother's past and mine is her laughter that means the laughter that the mother had in the photograph so both became the things of past what are the both number 1 the sea holiday for her mother and number 2 the laughter of the mother seen in the photograph to the poet i mean poetess both became things of past for the, these two people see that that shows that you know see holiday because of the time became a thing of past but what about the laughter of the mother to become a thing of the past for the poet probably she might have been burdened with responsibilities that she could not have any happy moments afterwards and so her laughter could also have been a thing of past 
and probably the 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 poetess could not have seen her mother being very happy being smiling and so whatever the smile that she could see in the photograph on the face of her mother had become a thing of past for her as well because of these possible reasons happen with human lives because after the marriage before the marriage our lives will be in one way and after the marriage our lives will be in a different way so please understand in that way i hope we are clear so far i guess so yes sir yes sir, right. yes, sir. the most important line the most important line the most important line of the whole poem the most important line what is that both rise with the labor ease of loss what is this showing see after having two things have passed one for her mother and one for her both of them suffered from a sense of loss right suffered from a sense of loss see here her loss is her mother's laughter in the photograph and for her mother the beach holiday so both the mother and the poetess suffered from a sense of loss do you all agree yes sir yes sir now ironically ironically paradoxically in simple terms strangely both of them were getting on with their lives in spite of this losses that is what the meaning of it both rise with the labored ease of loss that means both the past things are being tolerated by us by me and my mother with a lot of difficulty but had to be accepted because life moves on so both of them suffered from a sense of loss strangely they both started you know moving on with not started they, they were moving on with the life even though it was difficulty it was difficult for them to bear that the losses that they had suffered from they were moving and that is the meaning of rising with the labored ease of loss means rising with the labored ease of loss means both rise with the labored ease of loss here who are the both the poet and the poet's mother both are rising that means getting along with the life how with the labored ease of loss when they suffer the sense of loss from the sense of the loss they had to move on they did not have the choice of the chance to correct it or to get it back so they had to move on and so that is very very difficult and with ease of loss labored ease it's just like you know happy tears successful failure open secret two different meaning words have been put together to bring out a special effect regularly irregular you know these are all some of the expressions wherein you see two different words put together put together you know uh, to bring out a special effect like this labored means difficulty ease means without difficulty easy standard ease attention standard ease we must have heard stand at ease that means stand relaxedly without any difficulty but in the position of attention you have to be strict even when there is a snake in front of you you should not move that is the real meaning of attention so here just like just like in the expression standard is ease has the meaning without having a difficulty but labored means difficulty now try to understand the meaning of it both the mother and the poet's mother the, sorry 
the poet's mother and the poet, both, rying with the liberties of loss. They both suffered from the sense of loss. And paradoxically, strangely, ironically, that difficulty of that that difficulty of the loss is being accepted and moved along, even though it was difficult for them. I hope this this line is clear to everybody. And yes, yes, sir. And when you see an expression wherein two opposite meanings or words are put together, that is called that is called oxymoron. Oxymoron. Okay. A literary device, a poetic device, like the most popular and common ones. Uh, alliteration, simile, metaphor, you know, personification. These are all very common ones. Just like that, there is one called oxymoron. Okay, and this that is this. When you put two opposite meaning words together to bring out a special effect. And that is known as oxymoron. Now come, we are coming to the last part of the, uh, you know, poem. That is, now she has been dead nearly as many years as that girl lived. And of this circumstance, there is nothing to say at all. It's a silence, silences. The last lines, please. Now see. The poet says that in these lines, the poet says that her mother had been dead for years. She had been dead nearly as many years as she had lived. As many years as she had lived. So according to the poem, she had lived 30, 40 years plus 12 years, in, about 12 years in the beginning. So roughly 50 years. Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, including uh, the, those 12 years. That means, let's say, 30 years. Altogether, she had lived 30 years. Now, she had been dead ad, as many years as she had lived. That means, according to the calculation, simple calculation, she had been there okay, for 30, 40 years. Now, after 30, 40 years, she is just talking about that one. Now, she has been dead nearly as many years as that girl lived and of this circumstance that means even after these many years even after these many years in this situation in this circumstance there is nothing to say at all that means she is not able to speak she had been dead nearly as many years as she had lived and to understand ourselves, and to understand that one in a better way, so we had a simple calculation. She lived for 30, 40 years, and she had been dead for 30, 40 years by now. That means the poet's age must be 30 years, let's say. And at this time, this circumstance, she has nothing to say about that death. Because her death or about the situation that captured the photo or anything related to her mother is not making her to speak. She is willing, but the sadness centered around it, the extreme emotions that are being, you know, cropped up because of this, making her not, unable to speak anything. And so, the silence brought by that situation, that circumstance, is silencing her, is making her not able to speak anything. So here, it's a silence. That means, the silence brought about because of her mother's death only brings out deeper silence and makes her more silent, unable to speak anything else. Here, it's a silence, silences. Who can silence the people 
other people only or any other things if a human attribute human quality of feeling hungry crying feeling sad threatening the people silencing the people any human quality like this is given to a non human being whether an animal tree or a situation then that is called personification here personification is seen it's a silence the silence created by the situation that means non human being is making her silent just like a human being so the quality of a human being is given to a non human being and in that situation that is known as a, a kind of special device is used and that is known as personification so here you can see personification and you can even see alliteration the initial sounds in these two words the closely connected words remain same the first one silence in silence and silences the first sound again so the initial sound if at all the initial sound is repeated in the closely connected words not necessarily next to each other but in the closely connected words only in the beginning that to consonant sounds then they are known that is known as alliteration you can see alliteration here can you see any alliteration in these lines can you spot out where are they alliteration terribly transient feet the sound t any in terribly and the sound t the consonant sound in the beginning of these two closely connected words same so alliteration what about this one stood still to smile the sound initial sound consonant sound in these closely connected words stood still smile remain same so alliteration like this you can say alliteration as well and this is the poem for you guys just go through the original poems on your own and try to recap or revise what we have discussed them then you can understand the 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 particular chapter in a better way and you can just answer any question if you prepare for them are we clear shall we wrap up the show hello yes sir yes sir yes sir thank you thank you thank you and have a good day thank I'm you hoping sir hoping for a better participation and timely joining tomorrow we would like to sign off thank you all of you have a good day ahead thank you yes sir thank you sir bhai thank, thank you sir. thank you thank you sir thank you sir now everybody leave thank you thank you